You're listening to Last Word Radio, where you, you get the last word. Welcome to the Fourth Line Podcast, part of the Alberta Podcast Network, powered by ATV. This is December the 3rd, 2018. With you today is myself, Carl, the always wonderful Joel. Hello. And Nick Sagan. Hello. I had a great uh, a great name for you lined up, forgot what it was today. So next week we'll be back with a brand new name. Sorry, Nick. It's okay. I guess my actual name can be my nickname today. We'll have to settle. Okay, so I've got I've got uh, I got a text from a source of mine from right before uh, we started recording that I'd like to run by you guys. It's a fun fact. Okay, is this so about, is this is this breaking news? Uh, nah, 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 nah. I'll let you guys decide whether or not you consider this breaking news. All right, okay? Nick sources have hot takes for us. Here we go. Yeah, so the month of December this year will have five Saturdays five Sundays, and five Mondays. It only happens once every 823 years. The Chinese call it bag full of money. If you send it along, you get you get bags full of money in the next four days. If you don't, you don't get any money. So is this is this your version of sending it along? Sharing it with all of us? Is this count? This this counts. Don't miss this opportunity. Once every 823 years. That's pretty rare. Wait, what's the rare part about it? I don't understand. I'm confused. I don't understand this. <laughs> five Saturdays, five Sundays, and five Mondays this December. So just specific, is it like about, like there's three days that have five? Is it December? Is it Monday? No, it's, what is it's it? December. December has five Saturdays, five Sundays, and five Mondays. I'm fact-checking this. <laughs> I, I don't believe it. It does have five of each. No, but I'm, I'm fact-checking that this ha- happens every 128, however many years. You guys talk about hockey. I'm going to look at every December <laughs> for the last 800 years. <laughs> All right. So Joel, Joel's joel gone. Uh, unfortunately, Joel will not be able to share his thoughts on William Nylander signing with us today. He will be busy fact-checking 800 years of Decembers. Um, if you want, you know what? I don't think it's a bad idea. Nick shared that with us. This is his way of, of getting his bags of money. If you want to get your bags of money, tell people to listen to this show. Share it with your friends. And find out if you also get bags of money. That'll be what we maybe next week. It'll be money bags, Nick, because he's won the lottery. I saw there's like a a sixty million and and forty extra one millions on the line this weekend. So maybe we will do it. It literally happened seven years ago. <laughs> oh, what? Seven years ago? Two thousand twelve. I guess, I guess sources can be wrong. Sources sources can be very wrong. Before Let's talk some more about sources. Before we do that, I want to remind everyone, there's two very exciting things happening. The Alberta Podcast Network, as we know, is sponsored by Park Power. Parkpower.ca is a great place to go. I love Park Power because they will help charities. They'll be in your community. They also give fair and reasonable rates as well. So if you can go anywhere in Alberta to get your power. You can get it. You're not anywhere. Joel and I and Nick will not be able to give you power. Um, but Park Power can. Parkpower.ca is a great place to go. As well, new thing. If you Have you ever bought secondary tickets, gentlemen? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. So have I. Uh, Seat Giant is a site that I have gone to in the past. And now we have a discount code for the Seat Giant. So SeatGiant.ca. If you like to save money, which I know you do, seatgiant.ca, use promo code APN for the Alberta Podcast Network, you can save 5%. So that sounds like a win. What? Maybe your nickname can be Moneybags one day. Maybe, all those, I think if I'm, if I'm spending enough money on secondary tickets that I'm making that much back, it's not going well for me. I'm probably not that rich. <laughs> no, probably not. 
What's happened this week? Uh, lots, lots of news coming out. There's the board of governor meetings happening right now. William Nylander actually signed a contract, so we don't have to have the counseling coach for Joel. We will dive into the roller coaster that was that week, this week for Joel. Uh, Nick lost a bet this week. Uh, someone got suspended. There's a, uh, we will dive into all these, but first, Joel, how on a scale of Patrick Waugh to Andrew Rayqua, Andrew Wakewaft, how happy are you right now? Um, I didn't know this is not a, I've never done the happiness scale before. It's always like, are you worried? I've never, I don't know how to like, I don't know. I'll go Patrick Waugh. I'm pretty happy. I mean, I love me, Kyle Dubas. Such a great man. So Although he traded Josh Levo today, which I was really upset about. So, so he's only so an like, okay man. So he's in, yeah, I was very confused by that, but I realized that it doesn't matter at all, really. Still an upgrade. Yeah. Yeah. If you can swap out Josh Levo for William Nylander, I think you do that all day, every day. Um, so leading through the week, you know, you had quite the roller coaster motion Saturday. Let's, let's look at Saturday at what it, the deal came down at five o'clock, 459 Eastern time is a prob- approximately when that deal happened. Uh, 452. Get it together here. Come 452. On. So let's say it's just si- facts, right? We're sitting here. I'm, I'm using Nick's sources here. Nick's sources <laughs> okay. tell me it was 452 and, uh, I'm going to be quite rich. So it's 450. What are you feeling? Um, I don't know. I had turned off all social media because I, I'd given up. And then I, so I didn't actually know until five o'clock ish. Or like till basically five o'clock because that's when I turned it back on because I was like I'm gonna know now it's finally over and then I was like oh he signed that's a surprise <laughs> nice I, I, I honestly like did you guys think he was gonna sign like I figured I was like if he, if it's like four o'clock and you guys ha- and you haven't signed yet like are you going to like that's what that was my thing and I was like well I don't understand why. Uh, I don't know. I don't know why it took so long. I believe I said in the off season that he was going to sign by like six by six and a half between that and seven. And that's what he did. And so I was like, if I can decide that in July, why couldn't they have decided that in July? That was my question. But well, there's there's a, a couple of theories that I have uh, on that. But let's let's stick with the number. So he came in at uh, six times like just under seven. Uh, the big, big, big cap hit this year, two million in signing bonus, ten million dollar contract, which he'll only be getting approximately what six or sorry, eight out of that ten million, seven and a half of that ten million is actually what he'll receive because he missed a bunch of games. Uh, but the big part, another big signing bonus for next year. So a lot of the money's gone out of this deal, but it cuts the cap hit down for subsequent years down to what six point six. Is that right? No, the cap hits six point nine. That's the cap hit. Okay, so the rest of the seasons is six point. This year it's ten point two, which makes him the second highest cap hit winger in the NHL, which is fun to think about. Yeah, which also like doesn't like, which is interesting because like, he, literally the Leafs are the only team that could have signed him to actual money this year. Like no team had like unless like there's not very many teams that had the cap space to sign. Nylander. Right. And, and, and especially a, a $10.2 million deal, right? Like there's, there's 10 teams with 10.2 million in cap space right now. So like, for instance, if Matthews decides to hold out into December, he's not going to make up that money because they won't have the cap space to do it. So, well, and he's not making up, I guess he is making that money up because the 2 million signing bonus is the 2 million he's missing out on. Right. So yeah, so he, like he, he did it. So like, so the 6.9 that he's, that's the, that's the actual money that he's getting throughout the length of the contract. So he's, he made up the money that he missed by yeah. having such a huge salary this first year. Um, yeah. So I don't know. It was a really, it was just really weird the whole thing. Yeah. I was surprised it took so long. I'm surprised it was under seven. I figured it was going to be over seven. Yeah, if, it, they, if they actually got something, it worked out very well for 
like Nylander seems quite happy. You know, he should be. He's making a ton of money. It is very Loco proof this deal. Um, and you know, the Leafs got him for the years that matter. They got him under seven, which is part. You know, my my theory is for the Leafs, they didn't. You know, it helped them. The longer he sat out, it helped them the future years, right? Because it brought down that average value. So. For me, I, I look at it and I'm like, well, yeah, of course Kyle Dubas wanted to wait as long as possible. The fact that it actually took William Nylander calling him at 4.30 Eastern time to get this deal done is insane to me, though. Like, the Leafs were legitimately okay to just let it ride and not have him show up, which is crazy. But it also shows that, again, everyone was like, Nylander has all the leverage. No, he didn't. Like he never had, he never had any leverage really. Like, and it's gonna be like, it's it's just. I think the like I've seen so many things about like like who won, who lost. I see like all these agents are like Neilander and his agent won, and I was like, I don't think they won. I'm not sure the leaves. I think everyone loses and everyone wins. Like it's just like a weird mess of happiness and sadness and like. Like they like I think the Leafs got a good deal. Nylander got paid, but this should have been dealt with in September. We shouldn't have gotten to this. So it's just a weird. But I don't think I don't think this. It's exactly what everyone expected, and so it, he didn't get the dry sidle money. Matthew Tukachuk and all those guys shouldn't be overly happy about it because they're going to be like, oh, what we what everyone thought it was going to happen is what happened. So we're going to get paid the same. Like, I don't know. The only, like, yeah, those second tier, like Matt, like, what is it? Matthews, line a, maybe Marner. They're in a different tier right now. Right. in. Yeah, maybe we'll see. We'll see. I think leading the league in points puts you in that tier. I guess it could. You never know. I, I'm trying to help you out. Don't you want him to be in the second tier for money wise? Yeah, if Joe Sackick's listening to this podcast. Mika Rantanen's a terrible player and don't pay him any money. <laughs> but if Joe Sackick's not listening, I would put him 100% in that same tier. Uh, if if Murner's in that tier, Rantanen's in that tier. So, well, like, what? It, yeah, well, I think what's Rantanen on pace for right now? 90 something? Something like that. Well, let's, uh, let's get, I'll, I'll do that. Joel's fact checking took much less time. Uh, I'll do some math. Nick, what are your thoughts on this? I think it's a win for everybody. Like the only the only crummy part of this whole thing is Neilander missed the whole the first twenty five games of the season, but or twenty six or whatever it is. But I mean, it's you know, that didn't hurt the Leafs too much because they're still top what, three or four in the league. I haven't looked at the standings today. Uh I think Neilander gets in actual dollars, he gets his actual dollars. He gets paid probably what he wanted to get paid. And the Leafs keep the cap hit low. Like it's a the the only thing the Leafs probably would have wanted is another year of of his UFA. But I don't know. I think it's a win. That would have also upped the dollar value of it, though, right? So yeah, for sure. Yeah, Miko Rantanen on pace for 137 points this season. Jeez. Oh, he'll keep that up. Yeah, he will. He'll probably do that. Yeah. Either uh, either, but- and if he does, I think he's in that top tier. Not so, if he does, when he does, when he keeps that up. Do you you want him to score 137 points? I like you want to you want to make him the highest paid winger ever? Sounds like a terror. Like yeah, I would love for him that because he is not as like this is his career year. Let's all be very clear about this. This is the best Ratnan will ever be. I could well if he if he does a 45 if he keeps up this 45 points through 27 games the rest of the way yes. That is a fact, but uh, I don't. If he does that and he is a top winger the rest of his career, I don't. I'm very content with that. As long as my team keeps winning hockey games, that's what I care about. No, see, I don't think career year means this is the best he'll ever be. He is going to be worse than this every other year of his career. If someone puts up, I don't care who it is, whoever puts up 137 points this year, it will be their best career ever. That is a fact. No, I'm, t- I'm not saying he's going to put up 100. I'm saying this is his career year. He's probably going to put up like 95, though. He's not going to break 100. That's still top five okay. points. And then, like, what does he do the rest of his career? Like 30 to 40 points? No. He's Jonathan Chichu. 
Come on, let's be honest here. Okay, now. <laughs> I think I can't tell if Joel's being serious. Or not. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know who to back right now. Well, just just back it with logic. Is Miko Ranton and Jonathan Chichu? That's the question you have no. to answer. No. Excellent. No, yeah. no. He's better than 40 points a year, but he's not as good as 137 points a <laughs> year. A, that's quite the range you've, you've put yourself in there, Nick. Um, so, yeah, William Nylander, he is signed, uh, obviously, with the Leafs. They are sitting at the top of the standings, uh, one point behind Tampa for the top. Uh, it makes them a better team. There's no doubt about it. But Josh Levo, you were sad to see him go. A guy that you continually wanted freed. He's free. You got it for him. I just thought it was hilarious that, like, Babs finally played him and now he's gone. It's just like, oh, okay. Like, it's, I'm not fully, so it, 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 like, it's inconsequential. But I was surprised they chose him over Ennis. Or, like, they chose Ennis over him. That was just... It doesn't make any sense to me, but whatever. It doesn't really matter because the fourth line is playing three minutes a game. Who really cares? Yeah. Except for us. We're playing 60 minutes a week. That's that's how we roll. Um, In the playoffs, you guys are all going to forget who Josh Levo is anyways. Oh, yeah. That's the thing. It's just like... And Tyler Ennis and... Yeah. But what does is, what is this do to the future Jake Gardner contract? Do you want Jake Gardner? I, I'm indifferent about it. I think the bigger question becomes, what does this do to Patrick Marlowe? Because like, I, I would not be shocked to see him traded in the offseason. Well, he, and he does have a, a no-movement clause, right? So yeah. um, if he does get moved, then he has to be okay with it. And so, uh, you know, if, if his goal... I think it, it changes, right? If the Leafs win a cup this year, he's won a cup. He's very content. If he thinks the Leafs are his best chance of winning a Stanley Cup, and I would argue that that's probably true, right? Going into next year, there's not many teams that I would have as a favorite more than the Leafs for winning a cup. Um, so he's yeah. going to love it on Robida Island then. Well, as long as he plays enough to get his name on the cup. He might. I have, to me, the most interesting thing about the Leafs in the coming years is the hometown discount and who is willing to take it. Yeah. Cause yeah. there's it, that middle middle tier is going to have to make some concessions, right? Like Zach Hyman, you want to stick around? You gotta, you gotta take a cut. Connor Brown, you want to be a part of this? You're taking a cut. Otherwise we will replace you with some other person. Oh, I don't like those guys don't even matter. Who cares about those guys? They don't want to. They don't want to play for one and a half million. They'll they'll just sign every Tyler Ennis. Like who really care? Like literally, like that. Like to me, that it doesn't even matter. When you have Tavares, Nylander, Kadri, Matthews, Marner, like just play those five guys. You don't even need anybody else. Forget just about it. All sixty minutes, those guys, and then you. Just no, sell them you off. play. No, you play those guys, they put up all the points, and then you just throw up whoever else. Like, it really doesn't matter. Yeah, it'll be uh, a, an interesting way how they make this work. But, you know, uh, up until 10 minutes before the deadline, we were all laughing at the Leafs, and they made it happen. Uh, we will see moving forward how that went, or how that goes. The Detroit Red Wings and Colorado Avalanche faced off yesterday. In Detroit, in a a, t- a pretty tightly contested game, uh, it was you know one nothing with the empty netter. Uh, were you, were you pleased with your the showing of your Red Wings yesterday, Nick? I was. I thought they played pretty well, actually, especially for being on the back half of a back to back. But I thought they handled uh, the top the Avalanche top line really well. Yeah, obviously the the Avs one goal came on the power play as well, and so yeah, uh, that's you know it's hard to blame someone when you're facing. A team, especially a team with a good power play, there's you know no, top power happen. play in the league. It was Detroit didn't stand a chance on that goal. They they moved the puck so fast. Yeah, uh, and I I am aware of that. But the the big news coming out of that is the suspension of Tyler Bertuzzi. Uh, Avalanche fans are well versed in Bertuzzi's being suspended after games with them. Uh, what are, you, what are your thoughts on the suspension? He was suspended for... Well, you, you explain it. From the Red Wings' perspective, how did that go down? It, it got chippy out there. 
So uh, I can't remember the Avs player name. Calvert. Matt Calvert. Calvert. Yep. Matt Calvert got That's checked right. into the Red Wings bench when he tried to pull himself out. A few of the Wings grabbed onto his stick and held on. When he tried to pull it away, they didn't let go, so he gave him a little push, which brought him closer to the bench. The Red Wings pulled him in. Tyler Bertuzzi took his gloves off and gave him a couple shots to the face from the bench. So, it, you know, it's not, a, it's not a clean play by any means. There's a lot going on there, I think. Yeah, certainly. And, like, I, you know, I went back. I, I missed the game live, went back and watched it last night. And uh, was quite shocked when that happened because, like it, it had been you know a, a close game, and that's it's not a rivalry that is anywhere close to the rivalry before, but uh, certainly a lot. Uh, you know, th- there was there was some chippiness, but not a ton. And all of a sudden, uh, that happens, and it really it escalates the situation, right? Um, yeah. There was no reason at all for the Red Wings to grab on to a guy's stick as he's skating by to pull him into the bench, like. The list of things that they did where I'm like, don't do that. Oh, don't do that. Don't do that. The, the number of people, right? Dylan Larkin getting in on it. Like just person after person on the Red Wings bench. It was, I believe I counted 4v1 at one point. Some guys on the ice going after him, him. I'm like, you guys, you started this and are acting like he's causing things. I saw Red Wings people on Twitter being like, I can't believe Calvert speared, uh, someone on the Red Wings bench. I'm like, he was holding his stick. Like, the stick is only on the bench because the Red Wings put it there. You wouldn't give it back. I mean, that's that's kind of what's going to happen to you. Yeah, the whole thing just got out of hand, and it escalated very quickly. Like, when they held his stick the first time, and he kind of yanked at it, okay, funny, haha. They probably should have let it go after that, but they held on tight. When he yanked at it and they wouldn't let go, Calvert he probably should have just skated the two feet over to his bench and grabbed a new stick instead of pushing forward because the push forward then escalated them to pull him in and start um, punching him, which was not a good thing. It was not okay. I don't condone what Tyler Bertuzzi did at all, and I think that it was worthy of a suspension. Two games fair for that? Uh, I don't know. I think so. Yeah. I, I, w- I would have been very shocked if he didn't get a suspension. Two games seems fine to me as well. Um and it, I think the one thing that excites me is the fact that there, if there's any reason to ignite a little bit of rivalry between those two teams, that's the only good that I can take away from this. That the next time they play, and I don't, I didn't actually check the schedule to see when the next time they play is, but uh, the next time they play, maybe there's a little bit more animosity between these two, which will be nice. Yeah, I think so. It's I don't know. It's fun. It's nostalgic. It gets everybody going. It's a good time. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, so we will be without Tyler Bertuzzi. But the good news is, is that we will, in due time, uh, be getting a, a Nick live tweeting of him watching the Avalanche 2000 or 1996. Uh, oh, man. Stanley Cup documentary. I was hoping it wasn't going to be 96. It's, uh, <laughs> that was the- I'm going to have to watch them beat Detroit in the conference finals and then talk about how fulfilling it was to beat Detroit in the conference finals after Claude Lemieux dirtied up Chris Draper's face. Yeah, it's going to be good. We're going to get, so follow Nick on Twitter at Nick Sagan 19 to just find out uh, how he feels about what he's experiencing. So that'll be a a fun little thing to happen. I'm Uh, amazed this guy got two games. Like only two games or two games total? Two. I'm a, I was like, I can't even, I was like, it's maybe a fine. Like, it's not, it's not clean, but like, I would like, so I, I just watched it as you guys were talking about. It. I hadn't seen it yet. And you, it sounded a whole lot worse coming from you guys than what you watch. Like, it's, a, I don't know. I think that, like, the thing is, you can't condone someone pulling their gloves off and punching someone in the face while he's being pinned down. True. From, from the bench. Got, he got speared. Like, so Calvert, it wasn't, so like, this is the, cause like the way that you guys made it sound, it sounded like he wasn't defending himself. But as soon as he went back with the spear, he was engaging. Now, it sounds like a bad idea to engage an entire bench on your own. Like, I, it's, I think both guys, like, both, both sides did things they shouldn't have done. I don't yeah. think. 
And, and they, they kept escalating it one after yeah. the other. I, it's like, yeah, like, I'm not saying, like, what Bertuzzi did is not good, but, like, it wasn't like he was he was hitting a guy that didn't just spear him. Like, that was, I would hit a guy that speared me with a stick. I'd be okay with that. Like, and, and I, would I agree. you? Very, you wouldn't? Yeah, probably. I would, I would be upset, but I also, uh, one, I agree with Nick. He should, if Calvert didn't want that to escalate, he could have just gone and gotten a new stick. Yeah. Um but if if he didn't want to get speared, maybe just let go of the guy's stick as well, right? So it's true, a... but that's not that bad. Like of uh, the guy that escalates it the most is Calvert, hundred percent. Not saying that he deserved to be punched in the face for it, but holding the stick, like he went for. So this is so guys holding the stick to I'm going to spear you with it now. Like that's the, that was the escalation. I'm just surprised it was a full like. I'm a little surprised. I don't know. It was a little. It's a weird. It was a weird thing. Yeah, I actually think that, like, I don't want to get too much into hypotheticals, but if the refs had called it a major penalty or a game misconduct, there probably wouldn't even be a suspension. Pro- uh, yeah, maybe. I think it's just, like, yeah. good. Uh, like, Calvert, that's like, man, he's got a lot of stones to, like, take on the whole Red Wings bench. That's impressive. Like, that's... In their own burn. <laughs> like, it was... Well, I don't know if that, like, I guess that matters a little bit. But I would be like, he's like, you hold my stick, I will fight all of you. <laughs> yeah. Well, I think Tyler Bertuzzi had something to do with it, too, because he was getting under their skin. He's one of those players. He just pushes the limits. Oh, for sure. And he, like... I like, saw I, Bertuzzi's face, toothless face, and just gave yeah. her. Yeah, and, like... I could have bought like I'm just I'm surprised two games. That seems a little much for what just took place, but I'd be okay. like, yeah, it's, well, it's it was, was comical. The, it, I guess as an outsider, Joel find a com. I just hate Tyler Bertuzzi. So um, there was a, another trade you, happened today. Former first round pick from the Pittsburgh Penguins, Daniel Sprong, off to Anaheim, uh, and that's only to say that I I think this is a. Uh, in a similar way that a lesser version of the Dylan Strom, he was a guy that the Penguins gave every chance in the world to, uh, and his just his time ran out in Pittsburgh. They had to make a move, so they moved him for Marcus Peterson, uh, Anaheim Ducks defenseman, and uh, so we'll see what comes of that uh, deal. But not, cool. uh, you know, this is a, a guy that just couldn't break that Pens lineup. When did that even happen? I completely missed that. Yeah. I haven't seen anything about that. I have two things to say about this. That happened. First of all, I think Carl just made up a bunch of people in trades <laughs> just, just to stop talking about the Bertuzzi thing. And two, Carl just made up a bunch of people and then made up a trade. Like, not only do you make up people, you made up a trade. You're like, you know what would be fun? Let's just... Pretend that a trade happened. Did that happen, Carl? No, no that is no, that not said that. Daniel Those are not Strong people has been NHL. traded. I, Get out of here. <laughs> I'm looking it up. Just go to the Daniel's, Penn's Twitter. It's there. That's what I'm doing. Yeah. Daniel Sprung is not an NHL. Huh. You're right. Five hours ago. Yeah. Well, I'll be. Well, you'll be. Daniel Sprung, former second round pick. I, I think I said first. He was a second, but they gave, you know, they gave him enough chances with Crosby, things like that. Just, this was a, a guy that I was quite, a, you know, you give him a chance with Crosby, see what he can do. It's done. So this is just another Jim Brother. We, we talked, uh, previously about the Jim Rutherford tweaking. This is part of it. Is it? Is Marcus Pedersen really? really? No, not, neither of these guys are good. Uh, Pedersen's been pretty, like, serviceable this year. The Pens are the, the Ducks have a ton of defensemen, so they can obviously afford to get rid of him. But he's he's playing more games in the NHL. He's got a positive relative Corsi. These are these are things that you you know take a chance on, especially with you know guys like Justin Schultz being out for the Pens. I'd like this move for the uh, for the Penguins, and if the the Ducks need a forward, so that's you know all things are looking good. All right, I'm buying it. There you go, Nixon. Joel still doesn't believe that these are real things. Not a thing that happened. I think you just. <laughs> hey guys, did you hear about the news today? What John news? John Billong got <laughs> traded to 
the Florida Panthers from the uh, San Jose Sharks for uh, William Saddle. <laughs> Bill, Bill Saddle is a fantastic name that you just made up, by the way. That is, that is a primo name. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Check the Twitter feed. Yeah. This is legit. All right. I'll, I'll Former third rounder <laughs> traded for an undrafted college free agent. Uh, it's going to make a big deal in yeah. the scheme of things in the Sharks lineup. Yeah, Just absolutely. Played three men AHL this year. <laughs> uh, wow. There's a. Oh, he was in Die Hard. There's a guy. One, there's an actor named William. William. Oh, that's Sadler. That's disappointing. <laughs> I'm, I want Saddle. Give me Bill Saddle. I don't know. I don't even know what the first name was. Uh, well, there's the Buffalo Bill Saddle Club. That's close enough. Yeah. Um, you gave you gave William <laughs> Saddle. Uh, let's go. Let's go somewhere else. <laughs> what is the show fire. even? <laughs> what? That's what that's what people are this, saying right now. Uh, this is what happens when Carl makes stuff up. <laughs> uh, do you, do we want to talk about Gary Batman? He did things no, today. I don't. No, I do. I'm in, I'm enjoying my life right now. Okay, well, Joel's busy enjoying his life. The NHL governor's meetings are happening right now. Uh, some big news coming out. They gave their first uh, or their latest projected cap hit for next year, and they're usually pretty bang on, uh, especially the fact that they didn't even give a range this time. Gary Bettman said next year it is looking like $83 million is the number that they'll be coming in at, which this year uh, the salary cap is at do 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 eighty three million. So it's going to be exactly the same. No, I think it's going up three million. I think it's, it's going, going up. up. Okay, seventy nine. So it was, yeah, it's seventy nine and a half. So it's going up to eighty. So it's going up three and a half million dollars uh, next yeah, year. Yeah, thanks, Gary Bettman, for Jake and, Gardner. Appreciate it. Well, <laughs> I was going to say the least already committed it to Austin Matthews, but beat me to that one. Uh, so that that'll be you know teams like the Leafs in need of that will be good. Uh, teams in need of salary cap floor can make a a trade for Patrick Marleau, the Red Wing, or uh, Athanasiu, or Nick Cronwall. Just literally any one of them. <laughs> just, <laughs> any of them. Just just please help us. Uh, I'm, I'm. Oh no, never mind. That's this. I show. have a new game that we can play with Nick. Okay. Oh Go God. Ahead. Do you want to play? Do you want to talk? Do you want to finish the Batman stuff and then play the game? I'll play this game or, right now. Okay. Uh, which Red Wing do you hate most? And it's just we're just going to start choosing players, and you get to tell us, and it's just going to make us feel good. Um. So you just want to know? Gr- okay, yeah, so you, I'm just going to give you two, and you. Just I didn't realize it was multiple most. choice. Okay. Oh no! It's it's going to be it's going to be great. Dylan Larkin. <laughs> No. Or I don't even know how to say that guy's name. Martin Burke. Martin. How do you say that? Burke. Yeah. You, that guy. Okay. Okay. So Martin Burke or Luke Glendening. Who do I hate more? Yeah. Martin Burke. Is that the is that the guy? Did we find the guy in the first one? <laughs> We're just gonna ride Burke the whole way. Martin Burke or eh? Is that the guy's name? <laughs> Christopher N. Sure. Uh, I would part with Martin Furk first. Oh, no, you get stuck with all of these guys. There's no parting. They're, <laughs> they're just on your team. It's just who do you hate most? Martin um, Furk. Uh, can we play a quick little, quick little side game? Uh, where is Christopher N. from? I know, so oh, okay, I will Carl. Go with Christopher eh, is from Denmark. No, that's that doesn't sound right, Nick. It's go ahead, Joel. Well, I know where he's from. I well, I do too. It's Sweden. That was my second guess. I know that that doesn't count for anything, but <laughs> sounds pretty absolutely nothing right Let's now. Let's go back to the game, Martin Furk. Uh, Martin Furk or Jimmy, we're apparently going to get a lot for you, Howard, at the deadline. Martin Furk. Oh, just, I picked the guy. 
I'm really picked, happy that I. I'm amazed that you picked the guy. You, you picked. Is this actually the guy you hate the most on the Red Wings? No. If you put him up against Luke Wachowski, I would say Luke Wachowski. Oh, that guy's the worst. What about the Kaiser? I think you should Ugh. hate him the most. Let's go, Luke Wachowski versus Danny DeKaiser. Oh, Luke Wachowski. Really? Yeah, I told you he's the guy I hate the most. Danny DeKaiser, look, overpaid, but he's an oak. He can be an okay defenseman. But he's there for four more years or three more years. It's a, it's a long. I know how time. long he's there for. With that Wachowski guy is gone after this year. He's going to go to well, Arizona. Knowing Ken Holland, he'll probably re-sign him for four years at $2 million a year. That sounds like a win. Okay, this, is, this is a good one, because this one makes me laugh. <laughs> Jonathan Bernier or Danny DeKaiser? Uh, probably Bernier. That's the most Nick has had to think about one yet. Yeah, that's okay. Probably I, Bernier. Do you feel good about your team right now? <laughs> no. <laughs> did you, like, did no. you feel good about them before we started playing this game? No. Yeah, okay. Do you feel better about your team? No. Hey, on the plus side, Wachowski is a uh, UFA after this here's year. The, here's the, That's here's a the good plus thing. side. Yeah. The Red Wings are a point-a-game team. Like, they're, not a, they're not a laughing stock, which I thought they would be. Well, they were at the start of the season. Yeah, but this is now. And they they bounce back nicely. They're still playing a little better than they should be. Yeah. Yeah, they're tied with Ottawa. <laughs> <laughs> is that... And they're better than Pittsburgh. That's got to make you feel good. That does feel good. That well, that one go. does feel good. So now, we're, now we're feeling better. Now we're better than, better than Pittsburgh. We're... New Jersey, they're technically they're what oh, tied for no. sixth in the division. That's pretty good. It's all right. They they beat Boston on uh, Saturday in regulation, and they held Colorado to a pretty much one goal game, which is those are two of the better teams in the league. I think you know that's quite good. But now they got Tampa and Toronto coming, and they up. did it with stupid Jonathan Bernier in that. So yeah, they did. So that's a an extra. Don't nice worry. Thing. Toronto's got a big, big letdown game coming up here one of these days. <laughs> it's, it just, it, it's, it definitely feels like it. The, uh, the post Nylander game. Yeah, that, like everyone's just going to be like, let's just, I, I they're going to lose Nylander's first game. That's my, that would for sure, that's for sure going to happen. Yeah, because why, why would it not? Yeah, absolutely. That that makes a ton of sense. Here's more things Gary Bettman said today. Uh, he said that he is disappointed with the Ottawa Senators arena situation. So, uh, I, I think that's, there's actually, so you know how we talked on this show about like, are the Ottawa Senators such a tire fire that they should kick out Eugene Melnick? And I think around the horn, we kind of said like, to varying degrees of like, no, that shouldn't be the thing. That's a thing that's actually being talked about by actual people in the media. Like, should this happen? I can't believe that that's something like there is a a non-zero. Obviously, the Melnick out people want that, but uh, that's the thing that people are like, can we do this? Which is interesting, shocking to me that that's the thing that they think the NHL could pull off, even as disappointed as Gary is. Yeah, they can't. They can't. Like he'd have he has to do something like illegal to get kicked out. I don't think they can kick him out, but. They can ask him to sell the team. Like, ultimately, it's up to him if he wants to sell it or not. But, like, it wouldn't surprise me if the league's out there looking for buyers, making presentations. He has to do something that, like, a judge would be like, yeah, that hurts the integrity of the league. Whether it's something illegal or just, like, ethically or morally wrong. Like, it's got to be something like that, right? It can't just be like, we don't like you. That's... Yeah, that, that, that seems well, like a, that. a hard place to go. They can say, we don't like you, will you sell the team? And then he can say no. Like, it's still up to him, ultimately, what he wants to do with the team. I just don't see I just don't see Batman doing something like that. I never put anything past Gary see, Batman, but... Yeah, but not in a, like... It just seems... That doesn't seem to make sense for, like, even what Batman does. 
Like, why? Why would he do that? It's not going to change anything. Yeah, it's uh, a very, very plausible thing. Uh, more things Gary Bettman said. He said that uh, the NHL, in regards to the World Cup, he said for the last year and a half, two years, we've been anxious to anchor plans for a World Cup, but for whatever reason, the Players Association hasn't been prepared to do that. And this is the one to me that kind of stands out the most because this is him starting the old negotiation talk, putting the owners versus the players. This time it's World Cup. I think the players would rather go to the Olympics. Yeah, that's one that, that seems like like it to me too. Yeah, no wonder they're <laughs> not prepared to do that for whatever reason. Gary can't figure out that they'd rather go to the Olympics. Well, because uh, they Gary wants them to play mo- hockey for free. That's the, that's probably the other reason. And they're like, if we're gonna play hockey for free. I would like to do it in the Olympics. Yeah, pretty much. Like, do you think the last World Cup was a success for the league? I think they made money, so yes. Yeah, I think that they did too. And I, I still know a lot of people were very excited about, especially like the fun that was had with that Team North America. Um, there's still people who look at that favorably. Yeah, I, I think that the league would look at that and say that it was a success. I don't know how much money of that trickled down to the players, though. <laughs> None of it. Well, so, some would imagine because it would have been included in like the the revenue for the cap the next year, but. Um, you know, if if you spread that money across all the players, they got what fifty grand. I don't. I don't know. Well, I don't. I don't think that's how it would work. Wouldn't it work? It, it, maybe I misunderstand how escrow works, but I think it's if the league hits their certain amount of revenue, then the escrow gets released back to the players. Oh, see, I, I wasn't looking at it from an escrow point of view. I was looking at it for like a next year's salary cap thing. Yeah, the cap would go up, but. I'm pretty sure that maybe I shouldn't be talking about this. But no, yes. Oh, I definitely know I shouldn't be talking about this. <laughs> I really like. I think the way escrow works is that it gets released back to the players if the league hits certain revenue marks in the year, yeah, right? So they hold back some of their salaries, and then at at various percentage points, the NHL gives some back. Right. So the players should be pretty enthusiastic about a tournament that made the league a bunch of money because it would have taken them closer to their escrow goals. Yeah, I would think so. And if that happened, but like, I I still think like how much money do you think the NHL could have made off of it? Like if you think of how many games there were, an amount of that goes to the arena and putting on the event. What do you think? I know, I think the number is, I want to say a million dollars. No, $5 $5 million per playoff game, I think, is the average number from what I recall. So if you. They didn't make nearly that much money on these games. Right. So, like, if you look. These games. Like, so I was here in the city during this tournament. They had games in the middle of the day during the week, every day of the week. Tickets were. Like, I actually ended up going to three or four games because tickets were so cheap. Like, it wasn't that busy in there. Were they sold out or. Like for those date midday. Uh, no, the midday ones. I don't think they were sold out. Yeah, and I know for sure that they didn't. And that's in Toronto where they sold more tickets. Montreal they sold even less tickets. Um, and so yeah, certainly could not have been that large of a, a revenue generator for the league, but more so than the Olympics are. And that's the big thing. Oh yeah, like they don't make it. They probably don't make anything really off the Olympics, right? No, they don't. Just, so, just if anything they lose off of, and they lose off of the Olympics. Yeah. Why would they get advertising? No, like they get it's essentially free advertising for them, right? Oh, yeah, but yeah, I don't know. Well, uh, they. Do you see the Seattle thing? Yeah, Seattle's getting a team. Is it confirmed? Yeah, I think the team's confirmed. I think they're confirming the the time tomorrow. So they say everyone say like all the. All the rumors are that it's 2021, and it's supposed to be confirmed tomorrow. Wow, they don't want them to start their franchise in a half year? Be- in 2020? They, no, they want to... They, they're, Seattle wants to start when there's no arena, and the NHL is like, no, you need to start when you have an no. arena. So it's 2021. Yeah, I was making a lockout joke, because oh. the 2020 season is going to be locked out. Just trying to ignore that. Yeah, sorry for sorry for bringing the mood down there. Well, 
Uh, mm. I did find a number Sad to, to wrap it up. <laughs> Sad. Uh, Just think about William Nylander again. I love William Nylander. His <laughs> hair looked amazing today. <laughs> <laughs> no, it didn't. Yes, it did. Don't talk about William someone, like that. Joel, someone on Twitter put a picture of William Nylander today beside a picture of Brian Burke <laughs> with his porcupine That's hair. Funny. Oh, I, don't even get me started about Brian Burke. That was quite the quite did the take he had. You guys saw what he you guys saw what he said on Saturday, right? Yeah, I like, did. Like this is the, like this. Yeah, this is the guy that signed Dion for enough to eight years. Like let's. It's all settled down I here. Dis- I don't entirely disagree with everything that he said. There was a lot that he said that I don't agree with. Um, but yes, uh, there were some good things. That w- Interesting. What was the good things? Let's I think, hear. Well, so the way that he framed it, I think, could have been done differently. Because his big thing was, you don't give your sixth or seventh best player $7 million. And while I'm I'm not going to argue that William Nylander is the sixth or seventh best player skill-wise, I would say that if there is a player on the Leafs that I would want to keep. William Nylander is the sixth or seventh most important Leaf. So you have Tavares, Matthews. I'd put Freddie Anderson ahead of him. I'd put Mitch Marner ahead of him. I would probably put Morgan Riley ahead of him. And that's right there. So you, if that's the five, William Nylander slots in as my sixth most important Toronto Maple Leaf. And so from that perspective, I don't actually think his point now, I, I disagree. I think you can pay your sixth or seventh most best player because on a team that's very good, your sixth or seventh best player is very good. On a Brian Burke created team, yes, you should not pay your sixth or seventh best player seven million dollars. That is a fact. However, well, I just, he just doesn't get the cap though either. Like the cap is getting to the point where that's what your sixth and seventh best players are making. Right. And that's the thing, right? Like you're either going to get your, the the top players in the league's salaries are not going up as much as the play, the bottom tier, middle tier players are, right? So, yeah, th- that's going to happen. I just thought it was funny that he like basically like he he like it's like you can't take anything he says when he's like Toronto's not a cup contending team. Like that is a that is a take that he had. Everything else that he says should be discredited. Like he's just a old senile man that doesn't know what he's talking about anymore it's par for the course for sports net letting letting people like that on tv oh my goodness uh so it's so do you bad want to know numbers for the last world cup the so revenue was split 50 sure. 50 players and league players took home 18 million dollars so in general that entire tournament made them a profit of 36 million um which isn't that's I know I was gonna say less than fifty. That's less than fifty. I wonder if that went to the players who played. I, I so think there it did. is only to the players who played. Seven no seventy yeah. percent went to the players that played. Thirty percent was shared with players who did not play in the tournament. Right, so like basically it went like so if you didn't play in the tournament you got a twenty and you're just they're like here yeah, thanks exactly. thanks for coming so out the, like so. Yeah. The winning team split uh, $500,000 as their um, bonus. And then another chunk went to the organization, which is weird. Because, like, what if Team North America or random Team Europe had a one? Because Hockey Canada got half a million dollars from that, too. So, Interesting. Um, <laughs> so there, oh, it, it does say here. Because Team Europe, they won a quarter of a million dollars. And it was split between all the European conf- or Federation. So, yeah, that's how that worked. Here's here's five thousand dollars. There you go. Um, so we were going to dive into some of the central division. Maybe we'll put that on the back burner because uh, we've been we've been going for some time, and I I continually find that the Pavel Burays take more and more time as we continue to debate. Um, and I'm not going to lead the witnesses, but people on the Twitter are uh, some are demanding, some are requesting that their teams be picked for high sticking. And I, I'm well aware. I think if I had have told you who these teams were, uh, they would ensure that they were not picked. Absolutely. <laughs> it's like you, you want you want the Arizona Coyotes picked. Do not ask for us to pick the Arizona Coyotes. Um, also, no one no one made a play for the Coyotes because I'm a I'm essentially a three year old. So 
<laughs> when like when interacting like when trying to get me to do things act like I'm a three year old and the, I'll respond so if you tell me to do something I'm just gonna do the opposite that's very very true um Things that are happening, so, you know, we might, you know, we'll, we'll put off the Central Division talking about that till next week, but we're getting dangerously close. We're far enough into the NHL season. Uh, I believe two weeks from now will be the debut of the Elimination Station. We are at that point in the season already. Oh. So, ho- hold on. So we're bringing that back this year, hey? Unless we don't bring it back. If we don't bring back the Elimination Station, then it's, uh, pretend that didn't happen. Pretend I didn't just say that. That's this is how we have production uh, meetings well, in the middle of the show. We're, we're, we're gonna, I'm, I just that wasn't a, that wasn't I was in an opinion state, but I was just I wasn't sure. I was like I don't know. Maybe people hated it. In which case, we should do it. Because <laughs> Jules, remember, <laughs> how, how would you convince a three year old to stop doing something? That's how you should convince Joel to stop the elimination station if you don't want it. Exactly. Um, but that that could be a thing that comes back. But for this week, the Pavel Burres. The must-watch games of the week. There is a a number of very good games happening this week. Uh, tonight's game that I will be watching is the Predators and the Buffalo Sabres, which is uh, currently scoreless. Side note, um, I'm going to mention it because who knows if something actually happens. Connor McDavid not playing tonight. This is he sick. is sick, but who knows if he's actually sick. Do you Do you trust the Oilers to give a proper injury report? I'm sure, I, I don't know. I don't really think about the I, I don't, but that's just me. So we'll see. We'll see uh, Connor McDavid's streak of game started. He will not be setting an Ironman streak at any point, it appears. Um, so what we do is we pick the must-watch game. You head to Twitter. You play high sticking. Then after you've played high sticking, you can win stuff. We are getting dangerous. A side note on another thing. We're getting dangerously low on mini sticks. There are two mini sticks left. If you've always said, I want a fourth line podcast mini stick, there's only two left. So win high sticking, get those, and you can win. I'm also waiting to mail things out because I don't trust Canada Post right now. And so things will be coming out to you, oh. but uh, probably after Canada Post gets their act together. I'm, I might have a mini stick or two still. I should okay. check. Well, there might be more. Yeah, there might be more, but that's... It's a very, like, when I say maybe, like, it's actually a maybe. It's not, I that's, have no idea. Fair. Um, so, must watch games of the week. You tell us who you think's gonna win, and, uh, what the score will be. So, let's start with Tuesday. Tuesday night. Is that William Nylander's first game? No, but we're gonna, that's automatic. Yeah. It's an automatic must watch game. So, the, if that, can we do, if there happens to be another game that night, yeah, we'll, we'll just, just do double two up. that night. So look out for that. But I still think you should. I still think Buffalo Toronto's the game. Yeah, yeah I think I that think is so a too. fact as well. Uh, Buffalo coming off a of back to back, but Nylander won't. That will not be Nylander's first game. I don't no, think he plays tomorrow. I don't tomorrow. think so either. He he just got into Toronto today, um, and so we've got. My guess is Saturday in Boston. Not even. Yeah, I guess it's irrelevant if he. Starts on at home or on the road, so um, that is that is fine. Wednesday, we've got a, a weird collection of games happening: Edmonton, St. Louis, Chicago, Anaheim, and Carolina, San Jose. Um, I would pick Carolina, San Jose. Um, one one weird thing that's happening with this road trip with the Hurricanes: um, they're wearing their home jerseys on the road. Like you know how the NFL has been doing like these color rush games. It's kind of like that. Carolina annoys me. Just that I'm annoyed by this. Do you also this. hate their celebrations? What the jerseys? Well, it's just like be good. People will watch you if you're good, so just be good. Like, it's like I don't care if you're like, like I'm not offended by their celebrations, but like it's just, it's just they're becoming a gimmick, like because they can't be good. Just embrace being bad, maybe. Like Florida's done it for years, like. <laughs> Well, <laughs> for Tuesday's game, um, what do Wednesday. Wednesday's game? Wednesday. Just, just choose. I'm fine with that game. Yeah, I think Carolina Carolina's is the game. There it is. Uh, Wednesday is that Thursday. 
we have your two teams playing. Yeah. Uh, we have Yeah, but we have another collection. There's there's a good game which we will not be picking, that being Boston Tampa. That's a game that you should check out. Um if you like to watch uh Tampa hopefully beat Boston. And if Boston's gonna win, don't watch it. Uh what games interest you that day? Well, Toronto Detroit's gonna be a massacre. I am I'm not looking forward to that one. That's the letdown game. I'm expecting to lose. That's my that's my guess. That's no, the game I'm expecting should, to lose. We should easily win that game, but like, there's a letdown game coming here. Well, I'd be happy if it's that one. It's gonna be. It'll be. Uh, I don't know. I don't, these are, there's no really good games. Like there's no like. Well, I don't know what you want. Do you want to do? Do you want to do? Hey, let's do this. Uh, since uh, Nick is going to be watching the 96 Cup run anyways, uh, Colorado, Florida. There we go. In honor so that Nick can prep for it, Colorado, Florida <laughs> is the Thursday game. Uh, You're and, welcome, Carl. And Nick. Thank you, Joel. Yeah, I great. Don't, I don't think Nick is appreciating I'll have now. I'll have the rats ready to throw at the TV. <laughs> So. All right, Friday. We, we've got a surprisingly big Friday slate, and by that I mean four games. Um, <laughs> I think like there's there's two games that stand out to me: St. Louis, Winnipeg, San Jose, Dallas. Um, I know we've already got San Jose, but how do you feel about San Jose, Dallas? Yeah, done. All right, yeah. that brings us to December eighth, which that's Saturday. We've got the Toronto Boston. So are we, if that is William Nylander's game, you are aware that we will have to break the no Boston rule, correct? Yeah, because Nylander is just amazing. Okay, Nylander so, trumps Boston. Nylander trumps Boston. I would be – it could be Thursday, though, because that would be great. Man, I'm at I, – I thought I heard it was Thursday, but I don't know. It, no one – Babs didn't say it today. So there is a okay, chance so. that all three of our teams will be playing in high sticking on the same day? That's a first. Yeah. That is a first. Uh, Saturday, my proposal is Calgary-Nashville. Yeah, that's exactly what I was going right, to say, there too. There it is. Calgary-Nashville so. is the Saturday game. Sunday, we have... Not that game. That's not hockey. Uh, we have... Because I'm still using that same app Joel tells me not to use. <laughs> oh, come on! Okay, just stop talking. Uh, Nick, you can choose between Philly, Winnipeg, or Dallas, Vegas. Those are the games. Philly, Carl's Winnipeg. Out. Okay, that's the game. Carl, stop using that app. Just in, just in case you're wondering, the Chargers play the Bengals on no. Sunday. <laughs> uh, that's the important thing. Um, and there's not really any games that super excite me for next Monday, so I'm fine if we if we skip it. Um, Nick's Wings will be playing, so we'll be able to you know have a live reaction when they. They should beat the Kings, though. If anyone's going to... I know that that's like... The same way Joel feels about the Red Wings is how you feel about the Kings. What? How does he feel about the Red Wings? It's a letdown game. Like, you should win that game. You go... Oh. Uh, yeah. It's, it very well could be. We'll see how they do the rest of the there week. You know, those are our must-watch games of the week. You can head to Twitter at fourth line podcast let us know who you think is going to win the game what you think the score is going to be uh let's do some updated high sticking standings matt mr reasons are several the namer of the game is winning uh there is a log jam behind him he's actually tied with chad uh and below him a ton of people within there are 12 people within four points of the lead so lots of time to go uh and we'll probably crown a champ right around christmas uh, seems like a good Christmas gift. A winner. So, there you so go. That'll be coming up. Thank you for tuning in. You can find us obviously at the fourth line podcast.com, at fourth line podcast on the Twitter. Um, you can find us as part of the Alberta Podcast Network at Alberta Podcast Network.com. And what I love is when every week when we do this part of the show, I head to the website and I say, Hey, what is happening? Right. And, uh, one thing that's great about this is we actually, uh, you know, as part of the network, there's so many great shows and so many great people that we get to be a part of. Um, I get to find out cool things about all these different shows, but one of them that I want to plug this week 
is the Hockey Feels Podcast. They are the other hockey show, the other NHL show on the network. Uh, and it is an Oilers fan and a Flyers fan. So as random as our collection of teams are here, uh, that's as random as it gets. Um, but Steven and Rachel do a fantastic job with that show. If you've, if you've listened to this show for quite some time, you know they've been on our show in the past. Steven and Rachel do a fantastic job. So head on to your podcast app and check out Hockey Feels. You will not be disappointed. Uh, you will not be, if you are disappointed with the show, don't go to Twitter or iTunes. You can go to Twitter. I don't care. You can tell us all those kinds of things. I, I enjoy, uh, listening to what the, those who disagree with us have to say. I always, uh, share them out with folks. Um, but don't go to iTunes. Don't leave us a review. If you do enjoy the show, go to iTunes. Leave us a review, please. Um, that's a good thing that you should do. Um, I, I also enjoy watching Nick and Joel listen to me try to fumble through my words here. This is a good, a good thing. Uh, are you enjoying? You're doing <laughs> great, Carl. Hey, I'm let's, doing just, Carl. let's just get through I this together, you. friends. Um, you, you got this. Until next week, when we will be back, uh, we'll see what happens in the NHL this week. Lots could happen. Um, the NHL, William Nylander's back, so Joel's happy. Boom City. I thought you were going to say Willie City. <laughs> <laughs>